Hey guys, it's Marco here in the Easy Shop, and uh, lately I've been working on a project uh, that has very complicated geometry and requires multiple setups in the milling machine. And uh, it makes it challenging to find the center of the part or the reference coordinates uh, for setting up the machine. So uh, normally I use an edge finder for it, uh, but uh, I would like to use a probe. Um, now I bought a probe about, uh, well, quite a few years ago. I was not really that, uh, that happy with it. I think I couldn't figure out the center, dial it in correctly. It seemed to be go out of spec a lot on me. And uh, also Mark III is not really well equipped for, uh, for probing right off, the, right off the bat. So I couldn't find any software that I could use and I didn't know how to make my own. But lately I've been looking on the internet and I found quite a few uh, people that have done scripts or wizards or programs that you can actually buy, which I wouldn't mind. Uh, to probe parts and use those coordinates in uh, you know for machining for machining uh, projects. Um, one of the uh, the one I ended up using going with is made by Charlie Sarsfield. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel. I'll show it to you in a minute. And that allowed me you know with a few modifications, it allowed me to do probing in Mark III. And uh, so today I just want to show you. I just got it figured out yesterday, last night, I've been working on it all day. And uh, today I just wanna show you just a, like a tiny bit, tiny, tiny preview of what you can do with this uh, very simple uh, setup. Uh, so Charlie has changed one of the screens in Mark III and that allows you to uh, click on, uh, you know, ex internal diameter, external diameter, X finding, you know, Z, Z finding, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I like it because it's very clean, very easy to use. And today uh, we'll just pick one, like an internal diameter. I'll find a, a something that's got a hole that is somewhat uh, precise or measurable with the, with my uh, pin gauges. And then we'll put it in the uh, mill, use the probe and try to take a measurement and see how far off we are. So that's what's in store for today. Uh, again, I'm doing all of this with one hand. I just throw it together the last minute. You can probably hear somebody starting to mom the lawn outside. Uh, they probably know that I was filming. But anyway, um, hang in there. I hope you enjoyed and uh, yeah, cheers. Well, I just want to let you quickly see it is a touch probe I bought from uh, Probit. Oh, many years ago, I was never really completely satisfied with it. Maybe I didn't know how to use it. Maybe the software in Mac 3 is really not there for it. Um, a few people have come up with some uh, scripts and some modified screens that you can use to uh, be able to probe it. So I figure I would take the probe out again and uh, take a quick look and see if anybody had come up with anything uh, for my three that was worthwhile. There's quite a few people, but I was having all kinds of issues trying to make it work. Uh, this one's really nice though, and uh, you can see that it's got offset ways of uh, finding a part. You also have automatic uh, buttons, an internal diameter button, and an external center that you can use to, um, you know, find the uh, location of the part, find diameters, find all kind of measurements. Obviously, it's all dependent on this tip of this probe being dialed in precisely and the actual diameter of the ball there is not really it's not really what matter what matters is the over travel so for instance this ball i measured it at 0 0.4585 inches but when i use it I have to put in, uh, I found out I have to put in 0 0.034 uh, as an effective diameter. It's kind of like a hit or miss, a little bit of a, a little bit of playing around with it. It also has like three screws, I just marked them with yellow marks there that allow you to dial in the concentricity. 
Uh, maybe we'll take a look at it uh, in, in a bit. Um, I dialed it in within within a thou, maybe half a thou. So there's a little bit of error. Obviously this part does not spin. I try to put it in the same way all the time. Uh, and uh, what I was gonna do is uh, just give you a, a little demonstration of uh, maybe an internal an internal uh, uh, diameter. Uh, I just wanna give prompts to the uh, Charlie though, the guy that came up with uh, with the script. I modified the script quite a bit to make it suit my, uh, my sensibilities. Um, but you can see it's Charlie Sarsfield on YouTube. Uh, great guy, we've been going forth, you know, back and forth a little bit on uh, on uh, on email. Uh, he hasn't put anything out in, uh, looks like a couple of years, but uh, last email he sent me, he said he was working on some CNC pro uh, project. Hopefully, there's a few tweaks that he could make to that. Hopefully, maybe he can come out and uh, spend a little time on it. But uh, regardless, the changes that I made to it that uh, seem to work well for the X2. So, what I figured we'd do is, uh, and I'm gonna try to do this one-handed. I got a one, two, three block. Now, this is an old, my old one, two, three block. Uh, the hole seems to be pretty good, consistent size. But, you know, it was full of crud inside, so I tried to clean it as best as I could. Um, I found that, uh, let's see, a 350 pin from my pin collection here. Let's see if I can point, point at it. So the 350 pin seems to, let's see, at least before, it seems to work. Well, let's try, let's make sure it's, oh, sorry. This is a 370. Pick the wrong one. All right, 350. Seems to go in just about right. It goes in a bit, a little bit halfway there, and then there's some burrs that I wasn't able to clean down deep. So uh, it, it goes in pretty well, and it's uh, yeah, it's got a tiniest bit of a wiggle. So so obviously 350 or oh, 350 of an inch. It's slightly small. Let's try the 351. 351 doesn't really, doesn't really, doesn't really go in. So it's a little bit more than 350 and a little bit less than 351. So I'm gonna put this in, uh, in the vise there. Let me lock it down just a little bit. And uh, oh boy, how am I gonna do this with one end? Let's see if I can do it. I'm gonna try to get that probe inside the hole without smashing it. Now the probe doesn't have to be necessarily centered. It will find a circle, a circle center by itself. So that's probably good enough. So let's take a look at uh, the screen here and uh, Kind of cool because it's got a little bit of audio too so um coming from my three so we're gonna do an internal center it'll ask us if you want both x and y or just x or just y and if it is a circle it's gonna do it twice the first time it center itself and then the second time that takes the actual measurement and it'll give us the information right down here right now you can see the probe is uh 0340 there's no additional gauges in there we are going to click, I'll give it three delay, three seconds delay, so give me a chance to move my my head over there and see what's going on and keep, gra grab the stop button in case something happens. So we're just gonna hit okay. It'll give us a countdown right here. And it's already found one of them. And then it will do it all over again. So found the center there. And now he's actually taking the measurement. And then it will tell us that it's done. It will literally, literally tell us. As you can hear, 2-0 is complete, which means it took, oh boy, this thing's all over the place. They took the measurement. Let's take a look at the measurement again. We were looking for 350 to 351. 
we got 350.7 the difference there is between the two axes so the hole is uh, uh, lopsided by maybe four thousands um, you do multiple multiple tests and they'll come up with slightly different numbers but uh, you know no holes is perfectly straight all right so that is uh, that is uh, probing an internal hole in Mark 3. Hope you liked it. Maybe you can uh, get yourself a probe. Again, this is from Probit. And start taking your measurements that way and setting off parts uh, and jobs uh, using the probe from now on. So what do you think? Uh, it came out pretty good, I'd say. You know, the, it seems like the probe is working really well. Uh, again, uh, I thought there was something wrong with the probe back in the days. Uh, it's probably just me not knowing how to use it. It, it is a little bit finicky to, to set up. Uh, we'll see if it lasts. The way I figure I'm probably gonna have to uh, make sure that it is accurate before I use it uh, for every job until I build a little confidence of using a dial indicator to measure you know, the concentricity of the tips before before every job. Uh, but yeah, I'm ecstatic. Uh, I wanna thank Charlie for uh, helping us all out with uh, with this script. I think it's uh, it's really cool uh, that he did what he did. Uh, I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. Uh, at least not with a lot more understanding of what's going on in Mark 3. And he has uh, put a lot of information in the script. So if you wanna go in there and just change a few parameters and make it a little bit more suitable uh, to your operation, you can, you know, it's fairly easy to understand what's going on. So thanks a lot, Charlie. And uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will see you next time in the easy shop or out of the hangar flying airplanes. Take it easy, ciao.